My name is Heidi, and this is She Has the Floor for Tuesday, December 14th, 2021. And our talk today is how to fail forward. No is not a scary word. While in school, we don't officially learn how to fail, but failure is really critical for success. And our guest, Kenna Castleberry, today is going to help us understand why. As always, we are grateful to Jilla and Jilla's team for excellence in diversity and inclusivity at the University of Colorado Boulder. Kenna is actually a member of the Jilla team among all the many things that she does. And she was the person who actually connected Pretty Brainy with Jilla to help make She Has the Floor happen. So even before she takes the floor, let's give lots of sparkles to Kenna for everything she's been doing and making happen. So these are sparkles, but if, yeah. okay, great. Thank you, everybody. Um, thanks for being here. girls and parents who are also joining uh, uncles and aunts and grandfathers. And here is our roadmap for today. We'll begin with our introductions and a poll. And then Kenna will take the floor to present today's STEM chat. She welcomes your questions at any point during her uh, 20 minutes of having the floor. You don't have to save your questions for the very end. Pop what's on your mind into the chat and we'll call on you to directly connect with Kenna. Um, from there, we'll move forward with um, any additional Q&A that you might have and a second poll. And finally, we'll ask for your favorite takeaways of the day. We'll ask you to post those in the chat as either words or phrases. And Kenna, as she has been doing for several weeks, will take those away and create a fabulous word, cl uh, word cloud and send back to you um, as something to reflect on from today's event. And now I'd like to introduce B. Petner. Every week, B steps away from her job as a fashion designer at Kohl's, and she joins us here from Wisconsin for She Has the Floor. Those of you who've been joining for every session have heard me say before that fashion design has everything to do with science and math, and B can tell you all about that. And for now, B, you have the floor. Thank you so much, Heidi, and welcome everyone to today. Uh, to just start, I'm going to go over the guidelines um, for today. So after I read through these guidelines, um, I will ask our young audience members to introduce themselves with their first name, the grade you're in, and something today uh, that you just loved, something amazing that happened in your day. So start thinking about that while I go through the rest. Uh, please leave your camera on if possible. Make sure that you have a good internet connection. Um, if you can and know how, change the Zoom name to your name if you're using someone else's account. No worries if you can't though. Um, mute your sound when you're not speaking. As Heidi said, ask your questions as you think of them at any time during the presentation. Uh, feel free to write your questions in the chat and then we will call on you to ask your question to Kenna. Every question is a good question. Um, ask what's on your mind. And when asking a question, please repeat your name and your grade. So at this point, I'll have our young audience members introduced uh, themselves. So Althea, um, if you want to start. I'm Althea, and I'm in sixth grade. Uh... And what was something that you loved about today? That will be our prompt of the day. OK. Um... Something I liked about today, um, hmm. Uh, school was really fun for me today. Awesome. Um, and then if the Zoom, the two um, people on Francis's Zoom, if you guys want to unmute and introduce yourselves. I'm Maisie, I'm in fifth grade, and I and we decorated our Christmas tree today. Fun. My name is Francis, I'm in seventh grade, and today I bought a horse. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> that's so much fun. Um, that's super exciting. And then um, the people on Sean Miner's um, Zoom, if you guys want to introduce yourselves. 
Um, I'm Dakota and I'm in fifth grade. I'm Kendall and I'm in sixth grade. And what was something amazing that happened today? Um, um I got an A plus on my math test. Amazing. <laughs> Um, nothing amazing happened today. Just a normal day happened. Well, Actually, I got a cat. Oh, that's so exciting. <laughs> um, that's awesome. Great job. Um, and then Sophie, if you want to introduce yourself. Uh, sure. Um, uh, yeah, I'm Sophie. Um, I'm in eighth grade and something cool that happened today was in my STEAM class at school. Uh, so we're having like a career week kind of thing. And today, a doctor for the ER, the emergency room, um, came in and talked to us about common injuries they get um, there at the emergency room. Uh, so yeah, that was pretty interesting. That's awesome. Thank you all so much for introducing yourselves. And it sounds like you all had super amazing days. Um, so at this point, I'm going to turn it back over to Heidi, who will launch our first poll. Okay, everyone, thank you. And I think that even when nothing amazing necessarily happens, that's not a bad thing. So thanks for everybody uh, for sharing. And now let's launch a poll. Okay, and there we are. So this is specific to our STEM chat for today. Can everyone see the poll? I'm guessing you can by your reactions and go ahead and participate. So the question is, I think I am afraid to fail. And you can answer that true, false, or you're just not sure. Okay. All right, give us a thumbs up if everybody when you have entered your answer, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. And from your, emo okay, okay, that's great, Tom. Yeah, then you can do it that way or with your emoticons. Thank you, everybody. So I think we got everybody, yes? Okay, so we have three true, two false, and one not sure. All right, okay. I wanna remind you before I pop these down that when we ask for your questions like this and you put them into a poll, everything's anonymous nobody knows whose answer is whose so just be assured about that okay and b i'll turn it back over to you and you can uh, introduce our guest for today yes thank you so um have any of you ever accidentally maybe knocked something over maybe you've broken a plate or spilled water everywhere dropped your pencil bag uh well since we're all human probably yes um, much like our speaker today uh kennel castleberry who in her case may have almost caused a building to go up in flames but she'll be telling you all about that story in just a few minutes so in addition to being a human like the rest of us um ken also has amazing experience and background so she graduated with a master's of science in science, science communication from Imperial College London. With this degree, Kenna is currently the science communicator at Jilla. This work allows her to interview and showcase the various voices within Jilla and their work, especially in the world of quantum computing. Kenna is also a freelance writer for Octo Nation and works on several science freelance projects, including two podcasts. One of her podcasts from the Bibliophiles offers exclusive interviews with popular science writers discussing their books. Kenna also has partnered with the, Daily, the Quantum Daily, a quantum computing and quantum industry startup that makes quantum science more accessible to a public audience. Kenna has also been a mentor for Pretty, Pretty Brainy's very own mission innovation. And today she'll be talking all about how to fail forward and that no is not a scary word. And now Kenna, you have the floor. Thank you, B. All right, I'm gonna start screen sharing. Can everyone see that okay? I'm gonna take that as probably a yes. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, so it's gonna be a full presentation. So I'm going to move somewhat quickly, but again, as um, Heidi and Crystal have said, please feel free to stop me at any point and ask questions or put them in the chat and then I will answer them later. Um, my email is also in this presentation. So if we don't get to all of them, you can email me later with questions as well. 
but we're going to be talking about failing forward and how to say no. So a little bit about me. Let me close this so I can get out of that. So it's not in the way. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> a little bit about me. Um, like B said, I'm the science writer for Jilla, and I do a lot of writing about quantum technology and deep technology. I'm a Colorado native. Um, I love biking and writing specifically, as well as curling up with a good book. Um, as you can see on the left, this is me standing in front of Jilla, and then that's some of my book collections. I have quite a few, but um, some of my role models include Nancy Drew, Rachel Carson, and Dana Scully. So all across the board from popular culture and science, both. Um, fun facts about me, as B already mentioned, I do podcasting. So I have a podcast with my mom that we do where we talk about scientists and their human qualities, and that's been really, really fun. I love traveling. I just was in San Francisco last week um, and got back a week ago, I guess. Um, and that was really, really fun. And then I also love to garden. So I used to work at the Denver Botanic Gardens for a little bit um, before deciding to do more writing stuff. So it's nice to meet all of you, as we have mentioned before. Um, can we start with a short question? I just want you guys to kind of shout out or put in the chat maybe one or two words when you think of the word failure. Um, and that's, again, just something very simple, very easy. What do you think of when you think of the word failure? Perfect. Awesome. Yeah, Sophie, that's a really good one. Disappointment is great. Um, and I'm sure there will be other ones popping up in just a second, but I'm going to keep going and you guys can still think of that word if you want um, while I keep presenting. But we're going to keep going. So why are we talking about failing forward? Um, this is a really important thing, not only for, you know, people to um, people in science, but people just in general. So a lot of times we see failure as a negative, And this is specifically for women, um, since, you know, we are a girls in science power group. Um, we want to talk about, you know, our um, background specifically and how we can move forward and be successful. So studies show that women tend to dwell more on failure than boys or men. Um, and as I mentioned, I'll mention later, but women and girls, we tend to take a lot on, um, especially if we're perfectionists or if we just feel like we have higher expectations for ourselves. Um, so if we want to do something or prove something to someone, we'll take more on. Um, and this can make us feel more like a failure um, if we don't meet our own expectations or meet the high expectations that somebody else might put on us or if we're trying to prove something, we'll feel like we're a failure and we'll feel like we're messing up. So it's important to learn how to fail forward. So failure is actually a positive. So as I'm looking at the chat, you know, most of these words in here minus um, Sean Minor second uh, comment is, you know, something negative that we're talking about. So, you know, we, we see failure as a negative. Um, but it's actually a positive. And um, like Sean Miner was saying in the chat, it is a chance to learn. So we learn what we're not going to do next time. We're going to learn from our mistake and learn how to fix it. Um, and these are lessons and they become part of our identity. Um, and the most important thing is we're not shaped by our failures, but by our choices. So, you know, you fail and it's your choice to react to that failure and how you react to it is going to define you as a person. So that's why we need to look at failure as a positive and look at it as a way to shape ourselves and to shape our growth. So story time. This presentation is going to be full of stories because I am a writer. I deal with stories. I love stories because I read books all the time. And who doesn't like good stories, right? So the first story is how I almost got kicked out of a lab. And you'll notice that most of these stories are told with a funny twist to them because failure, when you look back on your failure, can be really funny. Like at the time when this happened, I was really upset and really sad and I didn't know what was going to happen. But looking back on it, I laugh about it now. And what happened was I was working with a PhD student at Colorado State University and I didn't understand the directions of what I was supposed to do. And I ended up ruining his entire experiment that his grade was based on. Oops, really bad, right? Like complete failure. I went home crying. Um, you know, I thought I was going to get kicked out of the lab. And it turns out that the scientist I was working with said, well, why don't you, you know, back off from this experiment? And instead, I want you to work on designing and writing for our laboratory website. And that actually showed me that new path of getting into science writing. And I really, really liked it. 
And I realized I wasn't really wanting to do any lab work and I really enjoyed doing science writing. So it actually turned out to be a really good story and obviously is a funny one to tell about how I almost got kicked out of the lab. So again, why do we fail forward? You can tell from my story that I learned because I learned that I didn't wanna do laboratory work. I didn't wanna do science. I actually wanted to do science writing. And I actually found my dream job from doing that you know, failure. So failing forward is not easy though. It's not, you know, looking back on that, that was terrible for me and that was really hard, but I can laugh about it now. And I've gotten to that place because it isn't easy and you have to learn. So failure stinks if we're being honest. And, you know, it's hard to handle and we can get really sad and disappointed about something. But if we don't fail, we don't learn and we don't grow from that. And that's the most important thing is we want to work on our self-growth, become more mature, become older and more experienced in the world. And this is important to do. So another story time, as B mentioned, um, I had the opportunity to almost set a building on fire um, because I was not good in chemistry class in my undergrad. So I originally went to the University of Iowa for two years before coming back to Colorado. But my freshman year, I was in this chemistry class and I had never done a chemistry laboratory like this. I kept putting things in the wrong beakers, which is a big science no-no because -no things could blow up. Um, I accidentally left the gas on at one point and the, uh, the TA, the teaching assistant who was doing the lab was just really upset with me. But I ended up getting through the class and I got a B plus and I survived and I didn't blow up anything. So all good things. But, um, but as you can tell, I learned from that failure because I learned not what to do <laughs> next time and learned that I need to be safe and keep others safe doing laboratory classes. So failure happens to all of us. Um, failure can, of course, feel worse for people who are perfectionists. Um, and, you know, we are driven um, individuals, especially for those of us who feel like we want to prove something um, or we want to strive for greatness um, or we have a specific goal in mind. Failure can feel worse if we fail along the way of meeting our dreams and expectations. But it's really important to fail because it actually adds to our greatness. Like if you think about it, um, like how many of you would appreciate, say, a candy bar if somebody gave you that and you worked hard for it as opposed to if somebody just gave it to you like if your parents said okay you can have this candy bar but you need to go mow the lawn versus if they just said here's a candy bar like you you realize you appreciate things more if you put in the work and part of that work is unfortunately failing <laughs> and failing forward and learning from your mistakes so that's why failure is really really important and that's why we have to have a perspective shift and change how we think about failure as opposed to a negative looking at it as a positive so another quick story time before i move on to our next subject um this is a story about how i failed a really fancy interview so i um, applied for this internship where i was going to go abroad to scotland to study plants um, because one of my degrees is in botany so I, again i love gardening i love botany um, and i applied to this program and the interview was based in New York City. So my whole family went. It was a big deal. We had this super fancy dinner. There were a bunch of you know big names in the world of botany there. It was a very intense interview. Um, and I got back at three in the morning after that interview. So I flew back from New York, got home, um, you know, ended up having a physics test the next day to take. Um, and I thought I was going to fail the physics test. I did just fine, but I ended up failing the interview. They said, you know, you're not getting this internship. And it turned out to be the best thing because I would not have gone into botany. And I realized by then I wanted to do science writing. So it worked out for me in the end. The other thing is I got to know my physics professor pretty well because I took the test with him personally and just started chatting with him more about science education. And he's a very big science educator. So it worked out in the end for me. But again, that failure of failing such a big interview was really disappointing at the time. And, and looking back, of course, I can laugh about it now or, or joke about it. But at the time, it was just really frustrating. So I think it's important if you learn anything from today or learn anything from my stories to just know, like, Failure really, really stinks um, when it happens to you, but know that if you learn from it or if you grow from it or look back on it, you'll see it in a different light and you'll be more positive about it and hopefully see it as a way to grow. 
So who has failed before? As I mentioned, failure happens to all of us and literally everyone, including these famous people on the screen, you know, Marie Curie, Einstein, Edison, Rachel Carson, Rosalind Franklin, all of these people have failed. And it's actually part of science is to fail. If you don't fail, you actually probably haven't done the research correctly. So it's important to look at failure in a different way and to see it as something that's productive. So as I mentioned, literally everyone fails. We have to see it as a positive and as a lesson. So now I'm gonna move on to the second thing that I'm talking about juxtaposing the two, which is just talking about how saying no isn't scary. And this actually kind of goes into the failure thing, because as I mentioned earlier, women and girls specifically tend to take a lot on and we have higher expectations for ourselves or we feel like there's more expectations put on us because we are women and girls and we have to fulfill these things. So it's important to say no, because we want to place healthy boundaries on our expectations and to realize we're human and to know how much we can take on. Um, it's very easy for a lot of us who are perfectionists or who want to prove something to say, well, I can do this or I can do that. But if you keep saying yes, yes, yes to things, you'll keep getting more and more stressed because you won't have enough time to do everything. So it's important to say no and to take breaks from things and to, um, and to just realize your boundaries and to know what's healthy for you. And so the most important thing is to learn that it's okay to say no, and no isn't a scary word. So I've made a few lists here, or one list of things that you should say no to, because I think it's good to remind ourselves what exactly we should say no to besides, you know, for feeling stressed, but saying no to something you don't have time for, it's okay to say no to something you're not comfortable with. It's okay to say no to something that might stretch you too thin. If you're already stressed or busy and somebody asks you to do something, it's okay to say no because you're putting yourself first and you're taking care of yourself and your mental health. Um, it's okay to say no to someone treating you disrespectfully. That's a big one. Like you definitely should say no to that. Um, something you don't agree with. Again, it's, it's the big thing is it's okay to say no and it's not scary. And so you should say no to anything you're not comfortable with or you don't have time for or you don't feel like you will do a good job doing. So saying no is going to be really, really important, especially later when you are in high school or college or looking at jobs, um, saying no and, and just setting those boundaries and being healthy is really, really important. So yeah, in a yes world, stand up and say no. Um, we live in a performance culture, so people, of course, are judged based on how well they perform. Um, and so, you know, you can feel guilty if you're not performing well or if you're not productive. Um, so we need to break the habit and remember that our mental and physical health come first, which is why saying no is important because we can always say yes later and we can develop healthy boundaries by saying no and getting on that good foundation of doing that. So yeah, that is my presentation for everyone. Again, my email is up in the top of the slide. Um, so we can start asking questions um, if people have anything or I can go back to any slides um, if people thought that moved too quickly or whatnot. But I'm gonna stop sharing right now so we can start asking questions. Thank you so much, Kenna. That was amazing. And just a quick reminder for uh, questions. Uh, please place your questions in the chat function. Uh, Heidi and I will then gather the questions and call on you. Every question is a good question, so ask away. And then also when uh, we call on you and you pose your question, uh, say your name and as appropriate your grade level again. Um, so yeah, are there any questions? I'm going to start with a question. Um, Kenna, um, and I'm saying this as someone who's had to teach this to girls, did you have to practice saying no? Absolutely. I think everyone has to practice saying no to a certain extent. I know for me, um, it just can't, well, it didn't just come at the moment. I think it came as a pattern where after a while I would be like, why am I so stressed? Why am I doing so much? I have no time to relax. Or my friends would ask, you know, do you want to come hang out with us? Or, or do you want to go see a movie or, or get coffee? And I just didn't have time. And it got to the point where I just thought about it. And I said, well, why am I taking so much on? And and so that was kind of the, the moment of saying, okay, I need to say no to a few things and cut back. 
And if I have time later, or if I have the energy, I can always say yes later. So yeah, that was a great question, Heidi. Um, and then uh, we see one popped in from Sophie. So if you wanna unmute yourself, Sophie, um, and ask your question. Sure. Um, I know a lot of what was said in this presentation is basically don't be afraid to fail because um, you can basically grow from it and don't set your expectations for yourself too high. But um, I was wondering how do, how do I know if I'm setting my expectations like too low? Like if I'm kind of underestimating my ability. Yeah, that's a great question, Sophie. I think everybody kind of goes through that too when they are learning um, because you think about something that you might want to do, like let's say, for example, like you really want to ride a bike, but you think that you might have to put training wheels on before you learn. Um, and you might be setting yourself back if you think that. I think the biggest thing for looking at setting your expectations too low is to think about things you've done in the past so let's say that, you know, again, you're looking at riding the bike and you're thinking about putting training wheels on your bike, but maybe you learned how to swim really quickly. And so, you know, you're a fast learner and you might actually be better without the training wheels on the bike. So I think if you look at how you learn and, uh, and the past things that you have accomplished, you can kind of calibrate where your expectations should be set, if that makes sense. Does, does that answer your question, Sophie? Okay, perfect. Awesome. No, that was a great question. I like that one a lot. I'm going to add one more thing to that um, for everybody. If, if you're not sure if you're sending the expectation too high or too low, and I, th I think that Ken has referenced this in her talk, try it. Try it, right? And if, um, if it's not working out, then and, and that and calibrate just means to kind of readjust what you've just done. And I think that her example of though we're all older than training wheels at this point, it's a great analogy. Um, because maybe we are ready to take those training wheels off and we don't even know it, but you don't know until you try. So so take them off go for it and then see what the outcome is. And then you can go back and figure out, was that too hard or can I try the next higher thing? Sophie, does that help a little bit? Okay. So I can give a, a funny story actually to go along with this. So I am terrified of heights. I'm also very motion sick. So I do not do roller coasters or anything. Um, but my fiance really wanted to go indoor skydiving <laughs> and I thought this is going to not end up well because, you know, they put you in a suit and you have a helmet and you pretty much jump on a giant fan and then the fan pushes you up into the ceiling and you're up in a tube and it feels like you're skydiving. And, uh, and I knew I was not going to like it already. I was going in saying, okay, this is not going to work. I'm going to get really freaked out. And that's exactly what happened because I knew myself, but I also was, what do I want to say? I also was appreciative that I tried it. And then I actually said that I did it. And even though I hated it the whole time and I only went once because I couldn't handle it, I still went and said that I could do it. So that, I think that to Heidi's point, if you don't know, like, just try it. We have a question from Althea. Althea, please go ahead and pitch your question to Kenna. Well, I was wondering um, how to say no to something you've like been doing and you want to keep doing it, but you don't really have the time to do it. Yeah, that's a great question, Althea. Um, and that's something I deal with all the time because for me, I'm like, oh man, I really want to go say, watch this TV show, but I don't have time because I'm working, or I really want to go read this book, but it's really long and I don't have time to read it. Um, or I really want to go hang out with these friends, but I don't have time to do that. Um, I think the important thing with that, because it is really hard, right? We want to keep doing something, but, um, but we know like it, we don't have time for it or it wears us down or we don't have those boundaries. I think maybe what is good here is to put a compromise down. So let's say it's something really simple, like I really want to go to baseball practice, 
um, but you don't have time for it every week. Well, you might compromise and say, okay, I'm gonna go every other week. And then the weeks you don't have it, you can take that extra time and do something that you might need to do. Um, that would be one way to do it. So you're not giving it up entirely and that way you can still do what you love to do. Um, the other thing is you can see the rest of your time and say, what else can I cut out that I could cut out to keep this in my schedule so I'm not stressed out, if that makes sense. Um, that way you can, you know, play around with things. And again, you get very creative and, and see what works for you. But yeah, it's, it's hard to say no to things you want to do. And unfortunately, there's not enough time in the day to do everything. Um, but yeah, that would be my suggestion to you, if, if that makes sense. Okay, perfect. I'm wondering who's, um, similarly to what Althea is asking, who's had something they've had to do and it's been an obligation and they have not wanted to do it? Just kind of show of hands, like you really didn't want to do it and it was going to be hard to say no. Does anyone else face that? Yeah, B, okay, Kenna, yeah, Althea, kind of. Sophie, yes. Okay, um, yeah, Crystal saying yeah. I think she froze. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I've, I've been there as well. I think it's, I don't know if anybody else. Has Tom did not oh. put his hand. That's important to observe here. Um, I was stuck in something, Kenna. Oh, Tom is putting his hand up. Okay. Um, I was stuck in something and I had to tell my mom no. And I knew it was really going to disappoint her. And that was so hard. And I was miserable because I didn't know how to tell mom no. And this went on for six years. So it was hard. I was just going to add, Heidi, while you were frozen, I don't know if anybody else has had this, but sometimes I will put something off because I think it'll be really tricky. So like whether it's like a writing assignment or something or a paper I'm trying to read and it's just really difficult. And then when I sit down and actually do it, it didn't take me as long as I thought and it wasn't as hard as I thought. And I think to your point earlier, of just trying it. Sometimes I know for myself, I have to get past my like feelings of foreboding or, or just begrudgingly doing it <laughs> to actually sit down and do it. Um, and so, yeah, I think, you know, doing that is really helpful. But yeah, at the same time, like you need to say no if, if there's too much going on and that can be hard too. I think you might be muted, Heidi. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, any other questions um, or comments from anybody? Okay, so let's do one more poll, and this is going to be a follow up to um, where we started. And so, um, let's see, let's go to the next question here. There you go. I think I see why failing can be important. So, true, false, or not sure. Okay, so we've got, okay, all right. Three responses, anybody else need to weigh in on this? Okay. Um, one more thing, um, just quickly, um, Kenna, what is um, quantum computing? Oh no, that's not a quick answer at oh, all. Okay. <laughs> I um, think everyone wants to know though. That's at, yeah. Uh, I mean, know. the nice thing too is you're going to have somebody next time who will be way more of an expert in quantum than I am, but I can tell <laughs> you, I will do my best to sum it up in, in one to two sentences. But quantum computing is pretty much just a 
fancy type of computer that will do problem solving faster at, than our current computers and can run multiple problems at the same time. Does that, does that answer your question? <laughs> Um, yes, that does answer the question. Um, I, th I think that when uh, we picture quanta computing, we're imagining, or at least I'm seeing, the computers, the very early computers from the 1950s and 1960s that filled a room. And so when I think of quanta computing, I, th I think of those early models. You're not wrong, actually. They're pretty big. I know they have to be kept at like zero degrees Kelvin, so pretty cold. Yeah, um, and they're just they're very fragile. Um, but yeah, you're you're not wrong. They're about six feet tall, if not taller. <laughs> okay. All right. B, jump on in here. Perfect. Um, yeah. So a couple um, final announcements. Um, so thank you so much again, for the, Hannah, for a fabulous presentation. Um, all about the importance of failure. So wonderful. Um, let's give extra sparkles to say thank you so much. Um, so thank you. Also, really exciting next Tuesday, um, December 21st. Please join us for our bonus STEM chat with Dr. Judith Olson. Uh, Judith Judith is a senior uh, physicist who leads work on the atomic. Clock. So we can't wait to see you there. Um, and also a huge thank you again to Kenna, to Jilla and Jedi and every girl and family member who attended today. Um, and back to Heidi. Um, I just want to give a great, huge shout out to our team. Crystal brings so many things together every week. So um, Crystal, she's our, our manager of marketing data and analytics, but she does a lot more than that. So Crystal, thank you. Um, Kenna is our content creator in addition to everything else that she does. Our diva for social media is Amber Cruz. Um, sent her great, great thoughts. She's not able to join us uh, on these chats because of her workload, but um, a great shout out to Amber. Um, the people who do our bookkeeping and accounting tasks are John David and Jesse Ann Lee, our ambassadors. Who are studying right now and taking their final exams are Madsie Boyles, Emma Younger, and Katie Schutt. And our board members are Dr. Mina Bogopal, Don Putney, and Robin Steele. Thank you, everyone. We will see you back here next week, in one week, not in two weeks, no, next week, December 21st. And until then, have a great rest of your week. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Althea. Bye.